Hi, I'm Alex Novikov, and I'm a Crow researcher from the University of Arizona and Emory University. And I'm here today to interview Dr. Randy Reppin from the Northern uh, Arizona University. Dr. Randy Reppin has extensive uh, experience in corpus building and corpus research. And without further ado, I think we're uh, ready. Uh, so let's begin. So my first question is, um, what is a corpus? Well, a corpus is a principled and purposeful collection of texts. And the texts in the corpus have to represent a type of language. So it could be it's a corpus of conversations or news reporting, and news reporting could be spoken or written, or it could be academic articles. And you might be thinking, okay, so what can I use a corpus for? Well, we can use it to find out about language. We can use it to describe language. We can use it to learn features of language. So we could see which verbs are most common in conversation, or we could find out how writers or speakers show contrast or disagreement. What features, what language tools do they use to express these, these um, feelings of disagreement or to express contrast? And we can also see how features of a story or a narrative are different from an informational text. So these are all things we can do with the corpus. Um, thank you, Randy. So my next question is, what kinds of corpora are out there? Well, that's a little tricky question because there's two ways we can look at that question. There are corpora that exist online and we it interface with them through that online interface and the tools that are available. And then there are also corpora that are on your computer and you can interact with them through various software tools. So that's one way to think about kinds of corpora that are out there. And then another way is to think about corpora that can represent either a range of general language. So we could say spoken language, or we could say a corpus that has spoken news, fiction, and academic writing or academic speaking. Or we could also look at specialized corpora that just represent a particular variety of language. So we could be as specific as saying, I just want to find out the linguistic characteristics of biology abstracts, or I want to look at first year writing. Uh, all right, thank you. So related to that, to um, uh, uh, looking at different linguistic features, uh, what searches can you do with a corpus? Yeah, that's a really good question. There's so many searches that we can do, different types of searches. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, there with the online corpora, these types of searches that I'm going to talk about are available both through the most online interfaces and also through um, the corpora that you can use with on your computer with different tools. So some of the ways that you can search include frequency. So you could see the most frequent words in your corpus, and you can also then arrange those maybe alphabetically or by frequency. So there are different ways that we can arrange these frequency lists. We can also look at something called quicks or keywords in context. And that allows us to look at the company that words keep and it also allows us to see if there are any patterns that we can recognize. And this can be particularly helpful, helpful for language instruction. And then we can also look at things that are called n-grams. That sounds very scientific, but n just stands for the number. So we can look at clusters or groups of words. So we could see, ask the program to tell us what three word groups co-occur or what four word groups co-occur. And this can also be informative. So if we do this, say, with a written corpus, we're going to see some examples like in the case of or the nature of the. So those um, words tend to cluster together. And so that's what we would see with an n-gram search or a cluster, word cluster. Uh, yeah, this sounds amazing. Uh, you can do all the searches. Uh, so do I uh, actually need to build a corpus? That's my next question. That's a really important question, Alex. And we want to always use an existing corpus if we can, if one meets your needs and it, it addresses the language questions that you're interested in or the aspects of language that you want to explore. It's a lot of work to build a corpus. And if one already exists, that's a better choice. So here are five free popular online corpora. So the first 
two, actually the first three, are specialized corpora, as I referred to in an earlier slide. The first one is the Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English, or my case. And this corpus is, was collected at the University of Michigan, and it represents classroom language and student group um, study groups, office hours, uh, thesis defenses, student presentations, so a wide range of academic spoken language. And you can actually filter this through the online interface to maybe look just at students or look at a particular group of students or a particular discipline. The second specialized corpus is the Michigan Corpus of Upper Level Student Papers. And again, we typically refer to this one as, as with the acronym, MyCUSP. And this is a corpus that consists of 829 papers written by students at the University of Michigan across 16 different disciplines. And those student papers received a grade of A or A plus. So we can see that these are really nice examples to show students in your classes, if you're teaching an ESP or an EAP class, this can be a really nice tool for having students be able to look at the types of papers or the linguistic features present. And you can search that corpus in, very in a variety of ways. So you can look at whether you wanna look at just the introductions or how citations are, or you could look at particular verbs if you wanted. The third corpus is also a specialized corpus. It's the Crow corpus, and it's a corpus repository of writing. And this corpus is quite unique because in addition to having just first year writing, it also has the assignments that were used to generate that writing. So this serves as a tremendous resource for teachers teaching first year writing courses or even EAP courses um, for students transitioning from an intensive English program into um, regular or I hate to say regular, no, into credit bearing classes. And it also is a resource for teachers to be able to see the types of assignments, descriptions, and tasks that have been used. So it's a great repository of both texts and assignment types. The next two corpora are, as I mentioned in my previous slide, these are considered general corpora. So they represent a range of different types of language. So they have the Corpus of Contemporary American English, it, also referred to as COCA, represents American English, and the British National Corpus represents British English. And these two corpora have different registers or, or types of language represented. So they have spoken language, fiction, news, um, and academic language represented. Some of them have, they also have magazines. So these two corpora are nice for showing the contrast maybe between an academic article or academic language and news language. So I hope that these corpora can perhaps meet some of your needs as you're looking to explore language and maybe help you from help you not have to build your own corpus. Uh, thank you, Randy. And I see that all these um, uh, corpora are um, uh, based um, based on English. So what if I need to build a corpus uh, if I um, if I have a different language, for example? Oh, that's a really good question. I focused this on um, English, but there are corpora of different languages. And also, if you do need to build a corpus, this um, group, Chibata, the Crow team from the Crow team, Corpus in a Box, Automated Tools, Tutorials, and Advising, um, has a lot of resources to help you be able to build a corpus and um, whether it's in English or Russian or German or any other language. So I hope I've answered all your questions, Alex. Maybe, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, Randy. This, uh, this was very, very helpful. And I hope that this um, interview was also helpful for our audience. And um, I hope that you, um, now better understand what the best practices for uh, corpus building um, are. And thank you for watching uh, and please uh, do subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Um, thank you.